Hi, I'm Larry Whitmer and welcome to another Random Active Anatomy. I'm here on a Saturday uh, working on our skeletal collection and I've got a specimen I need to put into the dermestid beetle colony, but before I do that I wanted to uh, show it to you. It uh, relates to sort of an unusual anatomical system called the paranasal air sinuses. They're air sinuses that come off the nasal cavity and, and invade or pneumatize a lot of the surrounding bones and soft tissues. This was a system that I actually studied in my doctoral dissertation, so it gives me a chance to um, show you what I did in the past, but also um, what we've learned about it today. So this obviously is a T-Rex skull. It's a, I think, one-eighth uh, 3D print of the Burke Museum specimen. This is uh, the orbit, so that's where the eyeball would be. This is the feature we're interested in today, which is the antorbital cavity, which in, in my dissertation I proposed housed a paranasal air sinus that came off the nasal cavity and then sent out air-filled diverticula, little bubbles that would come out and then fill, invade, or pneumatize the surrounding bones, like the maxilla, the lacrimal, the jugal, and, and, and some of the others. Let me move T-Rex a little bit to the back here, and I'll bring up this specimen right here, uh, which is another specimen that I prepared 30 years ago uh, for my doctoral dissertation. I got a dead domestic goose and then injected its paranasal air sinuses with this black latex and then you know skeletonized uh, removed all the other soft tissues and so this feature right in here is actually the antorbital cavity the same feature that in t-rex is much larger takes up a huge part of the skull in birds it's somewhat compressed what this specimen shows is that indeed there's an air sinus that sits right in the antorbital cavity but what's also kind of cool are that the, are these diverticula. Diverticula that not only go into the surrounding bones like we saw in T-Rex, but also extend back into the soft tissues of the head in front of the eyeball with a preocular air sac and then this subocular air sac that comes back right in here where it interleaves with the jaw muscles. That winds up being significant, the jaw muscle part, because as the jaws open and close, basically when they open and close their mouth due to muscle action, um, the connection of these air sinuses to the jaw muscles sets up positive and negative pressures in the air sinuses such that air would move in and out of these sinuses more or less like an old-fashioned bellows pump. And as a result of that, that ventilation, that's the term we use for that, um, um, uh, there's the possibility for evaporative cooling in here. Our studies then went on to show that these were highly vascular and that the, the cooled venous blood uh, surrounding these sinuses would actually track back to the brain cavity to moderate brain temperatures. Uh, Ruger Porter and I published an article in early 2020 that looked at the role of this uh, vascular system in thermoregulatory strategies in dinosaurs, not just T-Rex there. The specimen I want to show you today is, is it's a, it's a little gross, hopefully not too bad for you. This is actually the dried head of a wood stork. This was expertly dissected by Lydia Giesegi, an undergrad in our lab, and it's dried up so that it can go into the, the dermestids. So this is um, the American um, wood stork. Uh, there's a really closely related species from Africa, this one down below, which is a dried skull. Uh, of the yellow-billed stork. This is Micteria ibis, and this one is Micteria americana. And once again, you can sort of see this air cavity right in here, the antorbital air um, cavity, the bony cavity, that's actually going to be the same thing as that structure right there. And so um, uh, the key thing right here is that we can see in this wood stork specimen right here, the air sinus remains in place. That's what we're looking at right in here. It's all dried up. This would be very flexible in life, but here it's dried up. Notice that's all flush with the, the, system, the tissues here. Uh, it, it sends diverticula into the bones surrounding it, like the lacrimal right here. But we can also see the suborbital diverticulum, the subocular sac right there. The uh, preocular sac is in there, a little bit dried up. And we can also see how it interleaves with the jaw muscles. If I flip this around over here, and get some light in there, you can see the jaw muscles and the subocular sac sitting right in there. And so this is a nice example of the paranasal air sinuses, this antorbital sinus sitting in the antorbital cavity. Same feature we're looking at back here in T-Rex. 
Um, but in this case, it's actually showing us um, it's still intact. But it won't be for long because this specimen is going into the Dermestid beetles. But before I did that, I wanted to show you this kind of obscure and poorly known, but actually really important anatomical system. So that's today's random active anatomy. Hopefully you learned something about the antorbital sinus. Uh, thanks so much for watching.